Tim, very happy to have you on here again, fourth time, fourth time. Um, fourth timer. The tradition continues. Uh, good to be back. Good to have you back, sir. I, it does not feel like a year since you've been on. It feels a lot longer, but oh, I'm, I think the first time I've actually done this uh, this here podcast uh, at my house. It's usually always been at my parents' house or my sister's house over the holidays. So in the backyard, first yeah. Most holidays in my my living room. Yeah, it's well, it's it's nice to get the the interior shots every once in a while. It's a the computer's positioned in such a way where you get the most flattering angles of my living room. So it, it looks great. It looks, it looks like a sitcom. You know, you got somebody coming down the stairs or you open up the door. Yeah, looks good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's all all very intentional. Yeah, um, but yeah, Tim, fourth fourth time coming on, I, and I and I I do appreciate it. Uh, yeah, it does. It 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 feels like I I do know you kind of kind of well at this point because we we have a bumped into each other and outside of the the computer here. Uh, oh yeah, seen each other at, a, at Zebulon. And, uh, Zebulon, of course, where where everybody goes to meet up. <laughs> I, I went there on New Year's Eve. How was it? It was great. I saw Egyptian Lover. Uh, my girlfriend uh, was unfamiliar, and at first she wasn't that impressed and then she became very impressed and okay. i was getting tired i was like ready to go home and she was like no we have to stay come I, I did. <laughs> it was great uh yeah for a man in his 60s he's uh still uh still so vibrant uh seems very horny and he's i guess Late, late stages not i wouldn't say late stages of life but a uh, late stages of middle age i guess you could say i guess you're like when you're in 60s or early 60s you're like on the border of becoming a senior citizen isn't the cutoff like 65 i believe it's 55 and then ap- oh. i think i believe it's that i could be wrong though yeah. um yeah 55 plus senior senior citizen uh, senior qual- citizens discount and whatnot yeah i think he qualifies as a horny senior citizen so I mean, hey, there's bound to be a few, right? <laughs> there's got to be a few, yeah. There's got to yeah. be a few. History is a cater to those folks. So. What What do you consider like? Okay, this is this is an old person. Is it in the '60s or the '70s or what? Where, where's your kind of cut up? Like, yeah, it's kind of an old person. Ooh, I feel like it's not so much appearance and age, but sort of like a way they carry themselves. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Feel like somewhat feeble I feel like i would classify that person as being old uh right well i guess a feebleness that like that you would have, have due to age not feebleness due to like i don't know whatever it's a weird line there with with uh with being elderly yeah yeah absolutely i know a lot of people say oh i wish i could be you know this age for the rest of my life or whatever it's like no you got to be whatever your age is now let that be the best age that you were you know yeah. whether it be 27 or 44 or whatever you know yeah, yeah. I think there's, I think there's a lot of ways to well, still be vibrant and youthful mm-hmm. various ages i mean lifestyle i think contributes quite a bit to it and I th- I think that's pretty apt, Tim. I would I would say that's that's a, that's a pretty good indication. Yeah, um, I really, there's like certain things that definitely age people, stress and diet and I don't know, just various lifestyle choices definitely age people. Um, but also like interests, like a level of like social engagement, like you know, like I think a friend of mine once said like. The time when you like stop going out and like checking out new things in the world is kind of like, I guess, like the line of demarcation between you being like a young person and an old person, if that makes sense. Like, right. Certain people I know who are like in their early 30s, but they already like they seem old to me and that like they don't have an interest in like the outside world. They're kind of just like, I'm content to just. You know, watch reality TV and only like pay attention to the things that already know interest me. Like there isn't like a, a sense of like wanting to 
stay plugged in to like what's going on in the world. And there's folks like we'll see out and about who are in their sixties, but they're very much interested in like what's happening in the world. And those people like, despite their years and like a couple wrinkles and or gray hairs, but like, they still seem like youthful to me, you know, they still seem like interested in the world. Um, I think that's, I think that's pretty important. Like, I think like you kind of become old when you are no longer like open to like new ideas, experiences. I mean, me, I've been checked out for years. So yes, I understand what you're saying. I'm in that boat right now. So yeah, you're just, like, the boat just in your, you're in an old boat or you're a, yeah, no old boat old. Yeah. Just I'm out. Yeah. You're out. You're checked out. Like, yeah. That's it. I'm, I'm, I'm watching the reality TV. I mean, I'm in. Yeah. I've seen it all, I've seen it all baby. 7.30, lights out, I'm going to bed. I mean, I, I get that way a lot. I, I don't know. Uh, I guess it's a, more of a comment on myself. Now, like, at 41, I feel like I get, I'm getting pretty old. I don't know. I don't really no, you're still, you're still checking new things out. You're still, you, I mean, you're traveling a lot. You're out and about. There are times I, get, I go to shows and I'll be like, I, I'd much rather be at home right now watching 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, TLC has really gotten some some some, some big hits. Are a lot you, of people are talking about their programming. Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, although the CW really stepped up this year by picking up <laughs> F-Boy Island, not just the American version, but the Australian version, the New Zealand version, Spanish version, Danish version, and the Dutch version. Or maybe it's not Danish. Maybe it was uh, Swedish. I haven't seen all of them yet, but I... I did watch all of the American seasons of FYI on the Australian season, start of the New Zealand season. Now, is that because of your plugs in this in in the reality uh, TV show uh, genre that you're that you're plugged into this, or did you just stumble across it yourself? Uh, I I wouldn't say I'm I'm, I'm pretty far removed from working in that world now, <laughs> but I but I uh, I don't know kind of like to turn my mind off and watch the uh, I don't know it's it's like the TV equivalent of like eating frosted flakes or something or lucky charms like it's definitely not good for you but it feels great it feels great when you're doing it and then later on you go uh why did I do that I try not to I try to ignore that side and the regrets it but it's it's a remarkable show though or I guess shows well, which 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 country is the best country to 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 watch? If somebody's just gonna go in blind, I mean, I've really only seen the American one and the Australian one in full, but I would say the Australian one is uh, pretty great. I'm I'm gonna say it's uh, <laughs> I feel like as a country in general, they're a a bit more extroverted than Americans, so I think everything is like all out in the open. It's uh, the thought doesn't really marinate in the head. It it it, it pops up. It, it pops up in the head and just immediately gets expressed. Like, Less uh, filters, just out. Filters, yeah. Like the scheming is just uh, out in the open. It's uh, it's wonderful. I it's say. not behind closed doors. It's all it's, it's all, all it's all out there. Yeah, it's it's pretty fantastic. Did you go to Australia this year, or this this last year? I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did in uh, February of 2023. Oh man, yeah, and a good buddy of mine, uh, who's an old roommate in San Francisco, and he met an Australian lady, um, at his work, and I was working down the street from him on Hate Street, and he came in, and he's like, I just met this like really cool Australian girl, like, what should I do? And I was like, uh dude like give her a tour of san francisco and he did and they had a fantastic night and they just continued a correspondence and eventually she was like you should just come visit me here and then he did came back and was like i'm in love i'm moving to australia and then he did and he's been there ever since so it's been like God, like 16 years now oh yeah so i got to stay with him and <laughs> is, and uh, is he in melbourne or sydney He's in Melbourne. He's still with that girl. Um, they're super sweet, wonderful people. They have a very cute cat named Charlie. Um, 
so yeah it was it was great to uh got to end a tour and stay with them for like a week i think and, oh that's cool okay yeah and wow was, australia is great it's uh people there seem very happy it's and how do you how do you deal with the with the plane flight? Oh, how do I deal with the plane flight? Uh, melatonin. Okay, good uh, start. I usually download a bunch of uh, shitty TV on my iPad. Um, and yeah, go from there. Or good TV. I mean, I'll watch The Wire or something like that, or but usually bad TV. Um, the wire i thought i mean it was it was fine i checked it out i watched it it was it's it's you, pretty you, good not not like the best tv show though oh dude it's the best of all time i've watched yeah. that thing all the way through i think four four times now that's a lot that's that's a lot of uh viewing to get viewing. through each episode that's a it's i think 60 hours of my life donated each time you go through it but uh worth it Oh, dude, a thousand percent. If you're in like a hotel uh, in in the states, and you turn on the the television in the room, what what are you hoping to see? Just to catch like a rerun of. Oh man, well, I'll tell you this: uh, if you're in the UK, you do that. There is a crazy show, a naked dating show, called Naked Attraction. That is mind blowing. It, it would never work in the U.S. Like I think we have just such a different relationship with the nudity in the human body. But, but it is a naked dating show where people are just strictly evaluated on their uh, their bodies, and maybe maybe elements like their voice or something like that. Like, or uh, you know, you don't really get the full glimpse of like a person's personality at all. Like you just get the full glimpse of their genitals. But, uh, is it blurred or is it unblurred oh it's unblurred like they have just a very different relationship with that stuff in the uk right because um, i mean you you, get, you got naked and afraid here but that's blurred you know discovery's yeah. not 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 getting out there like that but uh uk television is yeah it's it's out there in the open um it's really hilarious uh you know they'll have like very english ways of describing like like well, that's a very cheeky vulva. And you're like, whoa, dude. What a way to just... <laughs> um, yeah, and then at the end of the show, though, this this pair, you know, they go off on a date fully clothed. And sometimes there's, like, this disappointment where, like, oh, I liked him so much better when he was naked, and now he's wearing trousers, and I just don't want that. It's no longer as appealing. It's... What is their standards and practices looking like there? Because clearly it's just all, no, nobody's even in charge of that. They're just like, whatever you want to put on. Just, yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what's, that's what's happening. It's, it's wild. It's, I mean, it's pretty progressive though. I mean, they have like, they've got straight couples, like gays and lesbians, uh, non-binary folks, transgender folks. It's a, like they run the spectrum you know it's it's a pretty honest portrayal of like average people's bodies you know it's 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 wild and you can now watch it on hbo max i believe so you can see the unedited version in the states now great okay i gotta stop watching the wire and i'll i'll i'll, I'll turn that on yeah i mean give yourself a break like the wire is pretty pretty heavy it's pretty hectic mcnulty he's getting into a lot of stuff yeah yeah I think he would thrive though on naked attraction. That would be Yeah, he wouldn't even care, no way. Yeah, wouldn't even phase him. Yeah. It would it would yeah, it would do very well. So that that's casual viewing for you in, in, in the United Kingdom. Yeah. I I I don't know. Sometimes like I I really just want to get to bed when I get back to the hotels. I mean post COVID it seems like shows are like are starting earlier um so you can go back to the hotel and kind of uh have some time to watch tv but i usually just uh, take a shower read a book and go to bed but how do you feel about the earlier shows do you like them do you prefer them over the the late 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 shows uh yeah there's something i i hate about like getting to a hotel at like 
1 30 2 a.m and it's always kind of a gamble like oh do you still have our rooms like things are a little more secure now when you get when you show up at the holiday and express and you're like oh it's 11 30 yes we still have your rooms just get some more ice relax yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> uh how do you feel about playing on on or around holidays do you do you enjoy doing that or is this something you'll do if you if it's scheduled uh i guess if it's scheduled i'll, I'll do it um oc's have played i think we played a new year's eve show before yeah we did in palm springs once um played holiday shows uh there have been like christmas time charity shows yeah, I'm usually I'm usually up for it. I you know try to get up to Modesto for like the week of Christmas and usually that's doable if there's a show or two. Yeah. If you play New Year's Eve, let's say that you're you're you go on at eleven thirty PM and you don't rap until twelve thirty AM. Yeah. Do you consider that the last show of the previous year or the first show of the new year? Ooh. I'm going to say it's the last show of that year. Because it started in the last year and it extended into the new year? Yeah. I'm going to say that. Yeah. It's a good answer. Yeah. Just got to figure out which, which band member to kiss at midnight. And then yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, Dan is the one that's closest to me. So I think it just be Dan by default. It's always the dilemma. Yeah, it's always a dilemma. <laughs> He's got heart-shaped lips, though. He was born on Valentine's Day. so He's, he's a good-looking guy. Total package. It would be, be my pleasure for the midnight kiss from Dan. So. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Living everybody's dream. Yeah, of course. Of course. How many shows do you think you've played last year, roughly? Or let me let me throw this at you. Over 100, would you say? I'd say probably around 100. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. Yeah, I'd say between... Flatworms and OCs, I'd say around 100, but probably less than. I mean, still, though. That's a lot. Um, yeah, I would say, I'd say probably less than 100, but close. Close? Yeah, I don't know. I should keep track of these things. Just In the, in, in the range, in the ballpark of 100. Yeah, yeah, I could... I could be totally wrong. Um, I feel like I used to hear about bands that would tour all the time and they'd play like 200 shows a year and that sounded, that sounds absolutely bananas to do. That's 200 shows a year? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think like, wow. over, like over half the year has been playing shows. I think that's, that's bananas. Um, I, I watched this really funny, well, not intentionally funny, this documentary called The Other F Word. And it was kind of about like, um, kind of like a warp tour, Fat Records, Epitaph, kind of punk rock bands, like growing older and becoming fathers. And fatherhood is the F word. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, navigate the world of being, I'm like a punk rock icon, but like, I'm also a parent. So, I, I, you know, I, and so you've got like the guy from Pennywise, like being like, I've got like a song called like Fuck Authority, but like I'm also authority. You know, the world is like, you know, dude, my whole my, my gourd is just blown by this. Um What a dilemma. But some of those dudes, like, you know, and that dude in particular, uh, they kind of just do like a you know, a tally of like all the shows he's done here. I think he did one year, it was like something like two hundred and sixty shows or something insane. And I, and you know, it's he's talking about how much of a struggle it was, like you know, being a present father while he's playing like two hundred and sixty shows in a year. Jesus, dude! You got to bring the kid as like a roadie or something at that point. I don't know if I even like music at that point. Like, it just seems excessive. But there's too much of a good thing. Yeah, and, it, and it's around two hundred fifty nine. I think two hundred fifty nine shows. It's yeah. you're pushing it. I mean, that's a lot. That's just insane yeah yeah i mean and you and you two are a lot anyways 
I mean, you're 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 on about quite a bit. I am, but I, but not to the extent like, not not to that. Extent. That's not to that extent. That's that's a little bit extreme. Yeah, yeah. And you hear about people do these tours that correspond with like album cycles, and they're like, oh, it's this record's released, so we got a tour for this like whole fucking year. Ugh. Ew. That's that sounds so tedious. Like, yeah. Do like a U.S. tour, a Euro tour another random country call it a day there like uh, that that alone is that's a, a hefty sum that's i mean i feel like that's pretty manageable for most people if like you if, if yeah if, you, if music is your job i feel like that's like a pretty manageable thing right but i mean but, uh, i mean it, it is a lot of playing though tim yeah. i'm telling you man you are you're out there dude you're doing it I'm out there. you're freaking pushing the envelope Imagine adding a kid on top of that. Ooh. Can't imagine. Well, Will from Flatworms did just have a kid. Um, oh, congratulations to Will. Yeah, Rocco Ivy. That's the that's a that's a strong name. Very strong name. Very cute kid, by the way. Um, yes, I think like for us, because I mean, Flatworms is not a. It's not like a major source of income. It's just like a band for fun. I think like. You know, with the kid around, I think that's going to definitely, I guess with the kid around, that sounds really, it's a weird way to put it. But with Will being a father. But the kid, the kid is around. I mean, you're not he's, not saying anything that's he's not around. true. He's, yeah, he's, he's in the world. But I think that's going to change how we tour. Like, we didn't really tour that much to begin with, but I think it's going to essentially cut things down just to, you know. Right. I mean, and, and you, you did some international tours with with them too, right? You went to Berlin this last year? Yeah, we did uh, a Euro tour. It was kind of about like a heavy period for me. It's like basically August, September, and October, I was all spent on tour. Um, OCs did like a Euro tour in August. I had like six days at home and did a US tour the whole month of September into the very beginning of October. Um, I had like three days at home for the Flatworms record release show, and then flew to Berlin and started like a Euro tour. Oh wow! It, it was like everything was like, like ten weeks total, which is a lot. Um, I got sick on the first day of uh, the Flatworms tour. It basically lasted the entire time. But, um, good, uh, good, good start. Yeah, it's, it it was one of those uh kind of rough tours, like. I don't think we saw the sun the entire time. We'd play like some really great shows, but then we'd also play some shows where people are kind of looking at us like, oh, I'd rather be at home watching Naked Attraction or FBoy Island. Like some real uh, crossed arm indifference happening. Um, yeah. Like I remember we, we played a show in Bristol. I was like, just sitting there mad at us. Like, what is going on? Like, it, it wasn't even like there's like, in front of me, there was like this younger couple that was like, they were rocking out. There was a guy who was probably like in our age who you could see that he was moving. And then a bunch of other folks who just had not only like a, it wasn't even a blank stare, it was like an angry stare where it's like. Just mean mugging the whole time. Yeah. Like uh, some scowls. It was, it was, it was impressive. <laughs> it the, whole, the whole time you got, you kind of got to respect that a little bit. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's a lot of muscles moving. Yeah. Like, do, do they hate us? Like, what is, what is going on? But, yeah. Uh, when, when you prepare for a, for a long tour, especially in, in the Europe or elsewhere outside of the U.S., how many items of clothing are you bringing? Are you bringing uh, a, a couple of pairs of everything? Or what's your, what's your, what's your math on that? Um, I get yelled at for having too heavy of a backpack or a, or a, or a bag on OC's tour. John likes to be a very Spartan in his touring styles. Um, whereas like, you know, I like a, I like a clean pair of underwear. So I'm bringing, I'm bringing, I think for me, I'll bring like two pairs of pants, uh, like 10 pair. If it's going to be a 30 day tour, I'll bring like. Between like eight and ten pairs of underwear, shirts and socks. You got like one rain jacket just in case. 
sweatshirt or sweater and a light jacket. Uh, I'm a hat guy, so I can bring like five or six hats. Two pairs of shoes, a lot of vitamins. Uh, I don't know. My, my suitcase does weigh a lot. Man. But, you, but you need all this stuff inside of it. I tell I tell myself I do. I'm a, well, I I believe you. It's not it's not a huge suitcase. It's pretty. It's pretty small. Paul has a much bigger suitcase than I do, but his I think he packs less though. So his he's got a big one, but it like doesn't weigh much. Whereas mine is like fairly small, but it's just condensed. It's just. I I I I understand both, and then I I like how you're leaving out Paul and Thomas, but that's yeah, they're doing their own thing. Paul's Paul and Thomas both do have pretty big suitcases, but I think they pack lighter than I do. Dan is pretty Spartan in his uh, in his packing. Like I think we've done Euro tours where he doesn't bring a suitcase. He'll just, if we're like gone for like two weeks, he'll just bring like a backpack. And can't do that. That's 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 real light traveling there. I gotta have a guide. When you're when you're on the road, are you are you doing a load of laundry or are you just kind of winging it? Uh I try to do laundry. Yeah, it's easier on U.S. tours because a lot of uh, hotels will have laundry. Mm-hmm. In Europe, not so much of the hotels. Um, some venues have laundry though. Oh, okay. I'm fairly good at doing sink laundry. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you take the. Dr. Bronner's liquid soap. Just uh, pour it in the sink, get everything soaked, move it about, and then rinse it out, hang it up in the shower, and hope it's dry in the morning. So, you, so are you uh, are you pulling up the what would you call that the the plunge, I guess, or the plunger of the of the sink and 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 getting it all filled up, and, and that's how you're doing it. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, by the time that you get back to it uh, after hanging it up, is it usually dry or is it still kind of wet? It depends. Uh, some hotels in Europe and the UK will have like those ele- those electric or gas powered um, towel racks that are meant to like warm the towels up. So you get out of the shower and you got a nice warm towel. And a lot of times you, know, you can just clean stuff up and set it on there, and it'll heat up. And then by the morning, not only be dry, sometimes it'll be crispy. And, um, All right, not bad. I a warm it. towel rack. I've never heard of that, but I like it. Lovely invention, I gotta say. Um, yeah, I mean, if you, you know, a lot of times though, if you wring stuff out enough, like it'll, it'll be dry in the morning. Right, right. I see what you're saying. What kind of what kind of pants are you working with, Tim? What is this denim that you're wringing out, or I usually don't wash the pants. I usually do that when I come back. They don't mm-hmm. get they get if they get stinky, then I will wash them. But usually, not so much. Yeah, I mean, you can you can rock pants for a couple of rounds, and it's not gonna yeah have a fake fragrance to it. Yeah, not so much. Which is sure, it's the underwear, the socks. That's the stuff that gets nasty. Yeah, that's you got to be careful with that. Yeah, and, and shirts can can still. That's that's also another one you can hang off on. I mean, I'm 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 a pretty fragrant guy, so I gotta. Uh, I can't really get more than a day out of a shirt. It gets uh, get nasty. I mean, I, I more than a day is pushing it, but you 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 could push it if if need be. We've all I, been there. It's like important though to know your limitations when you're in a band with people for you know and, and touring a lot. Like there's some people that just don't smell. Like John is one of the rare people I've known who he's just not a guy that smells. Um, he will get. I've seen him wear the same shirt sometimes for like five days in a row, and there's not a drop of odor. Um, and, and he sweats a lot. He's a sweaty guy too. But I think he's just got very uh, clear sweat. Just, uh, just, I don't know. Um, that's that, that's kind of interesting. That duality, though, of of, of perspiring uh, a lot and not uh, having a stink. Yeah, my my sweat is real gross. It's uh, real real salty and nasty. And um, so yeah, I I, I got to keep a rotation going and keep stuff clean. Yeah. It's true. It, it's it's important. Now, now you said two pairs of shoes. Are you doing just two tennis shoes? What are you What are you doing? Uh, yeah. I love like I love Clark's shoes. So mm. 
like Clark's Desert Dudes or like Wallabies or something like that, or um, maybe maybe like some canvas shoes. And then I keep a pair of running shoes in my bag just to hit the hotel gym in the morning or go run somewhere. Um, but yeah. Keep that, that, that cardio up. Keep that cardio up. Baby. Keep that, that heart pumping. Um, yeah, I understand. Do you, know, uh, do you know Johnny Cosmo? Do you know that guy? Johnny Cosmo? Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah, he's been on this podcast. Go check out that out. That was a, yeah, he's, he's a really nice guy. I really like him a lot. Uh, he had this whole thing called uh, Shadow Laundry, where uh, you basically just put something in a bag, leave it in the trunk of your car in the shadows, and the darkness cleans the clothes. That sounds like something you'd say. Yeah. I, it wouldn't work for me. My, my, my sweat is too acrid. But uh, for some people, for Johnny, shout out, shout out laundry might be totally effective. Well, that, I, I think that's the old, the old Burlington, Vermont trick. So I think it sounds yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a great, he's a great guy. Um, yeah, puts yeah. on a heck of a show. Oh, yeah. He's a, he's a total. Total sweet character, yeah. But yeah, I feel like from up there, I feel like a a New Englander, probably raised on granola and crab cakes. Like you probably like probably got some good good sweat through your body. It was not nasty, but I I grew up in Modesto, California. My whole childhood is probably just sprayed with pesticides, so my the stuff coming out of my body is probably terrible. Yeah, but you're getting it out now, which is good though. You know, it's not it's not staying in there. I'm trying to. It's gonna take a long time. But I, I, I like that you go back just to remind yourself of like what you're getting rid of. It's, it's good. Yeah, what you're getting rid of, but also replenish. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to keep a little bit in there. Yeah, it's kind of like a kind of like getting healthy. You know, you got to get a little bit of the sickness to overcome it. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. It's, it's true. all science. Yeah, it's all it's all up to snuff. It is all science. What was touring uh, with the new Flatworms album uh, "Witness Marks" like for you? Was it was that what you were doing out there in uh, in Europe and out and about? I, yeah, that record came out in September. Uh, so we toured Europe um, in October. I mean, it was kind of a rough tour. We all got sick. I was sick the entire time. Uh, we played some great shows. We played some shows that were like people were like pretty indifferent. Um, I think it was just like, I don't know. I think we're all going through some stuff at the same time. Like I was just very tired from being on the road and was just very sick. It was great. I was glad we did it. But uh, yeah, we also just, we just didn't see this. I think I mentioned this earlier. We didn't really see the sun the entire time. It was like rainy and gray. And, perfect. Yeah, yeah it was perfect. Yeah. Real right. uh, boosting tour. But, um, right, right on, man. <laughs> but, it, but when we came back though we had like a couple of days at home and then we uh played a show at levitation in austin that was super fun kind of like a it was like revitalizing because we we're just all pretty feeling pretty low and then played this festival here called substance um mm -hmm. right uh in, in in la right yeah at the globe theater I got to do double duty that night. I got to play Flatworms earlier in the day and then OCs later. And for both bands, it was like the shows were really fun and well, kind of a redeeming after having some rough, rough patches. Um, I, I like to hear that that you that you're pulling double duty sometimes, Tim. I like to I like yeah. to hear that. Double duty is kind of fun. I mean, Flatworms kind of like starts off with a bang with our sets, like kind of. I'm out the gate swinging, and then it kind of leaves me warmed up. So by the time I play with those C's, like I'm I'm loose as a goose and ready to ready to do the, the darn thing. Um, well, they don't call you the bass laborer for nothing, you know. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah. Officially out of apprentice apprenticeships. Um, and it, I mean, it lasted a while though. Yeah, it's a long apprenticeship, yeah. Right, right. Uh, and then, and now you are a journeyman. Yeah, yeah, I'm there. I'm there. Oh yeah, paid my dues, got my card. Mm -hmm. Your your name was up there on the on the whiteboard for quite a while. Yeah, made it, made it. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel when you're playing new songs in front of a crowd for the first time, for the first couple of times? Does it does it kind of feel a little bit weird, or 
are you pretty familiar with it by the time it's it's reaching an audience? Uh, with OCs, like, John's pretty cautious about new songs. Like, um, he won't want to play them if it if he doesn't feel like these are gonna translate well live. And you know, we'll have we'll have certain songs where like this this is gonna go well. We should totally play this live. Like, no, no, it's not good. It's not gonna it's not gonna sound right. And you gotta kind of like trust his judgment. Like he'll hear something that in his mind won't work for you know a live context. Um, so usually with, with OCs, it's we're usually like pretty confident with a new song if we're gonna be playing it with people. What um, about for uh, the, the the Flatworms? This new album were you were you playing mostly from that or kind of mixing in mostly new songs? Um, I feel like we 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 were pretty confident with everything. Like we played those songs so much before, we, you know, we brought them out live. So I think. We felt like they were going to translate well. Um, it's funny though with OC, sometimes we'll like play a new song that has yet to be released, and I look out and every once in a while, like I'll see some kid like pretending to like know the words and he's like mouthing like. Oh, <laughs> well, I like what you're doing. Witness marks third LP from Flatworms. P three, fifth release. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, um, that's that that's amazing, man. Uh, and for those of you who haven't been able to see Flatworms or skipped out on it for some reason, turn off the reality television. And go see them live. It's a heck of a show, I'll tell you. I mean, or or don't. It's okay. I, I I'm tell, I'm I'm saying do. I'm I'm recommending it. I think the first time that we met in person, it was at a Flatworm show. I oh, want to say. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I want to say that's the first time that we crossed paths in in person, and I I was very happy yeah, to be there. Yeah, we met at the Terrier. The first time we met. <laughs> Shit, that's right. I apologize for that, Tim. Yes, we we did meet at the Terrier. That was a long time ago. Yeah, for the yeah. Pesos last show. Oh, I didn't know it was our last show. I my my buddy Barrett was playing with them, so I went to go see. I went to go see them play. And uh, yeah, I think we chatted outside, um, you know, in the back patio area. Yeah, and then that, that time in Bristol. Bristol. <laughs> uh, but yes, go go see Flatworms. Um, <clears throat> can't recommend it enough. I got I was able to get one of those Flatworms Antarctica shirts, and I did, I, I love that album cover. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah there's a, Will does all the art. Um, I feel like he just has really cool great ideas I, I loved how that turned out i think it's very nice um very 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 good and uh the, the witness marks it has like a, a feel to it i don't know i haven't really been able to put my finger on it but it's kind of it's, it's got a type of feeling in terms of the art or the music? yeah well both but yeah but the but the art goes well with the music i'd say yeah i think so we'll have a pretty good idea for what he wanted to for that one uh him and his wife collaborated on that um i think she might have taken a picture or maybe he took a picture i know that the hand of the glove is either will or, or owen um yeah I mean, he's he's a smart artistically inclined dude he's always got some cool ideas um cool ideas yeah, good musician i mean hey come on yeah, dude um there's always kind of this like implicit trust like not in the band or like if somebody puts forth an idea like we try to see it through and trust their trust their vision right on offer suggestions if they're if suggestions are needed or if someone's open to that was there a discussion amongst the band like hey it's let's it's time to put out a new album or did it just kind of come on naturally like all right yeah, we i got some ideas and Everybody else has some ideas. We kind of look at it like uh, every record I've ever done. It's almost just like a, almost like a, just like a yearbook in a way. It's like this is what we did for this period of time. Like, um, I, I don't know. I never think of. I've never been in a band where like you write a record just with like a very, very, very clear goal 
um, it's usually just like, this is what we came up with in this period of time. We'll just, we just record it. And, although I think with the last OC's record, it was a little more thought out in terms of aesthetics. And so I guess the record before that too, where John wanted to write like a punk record and then he wanted to write more of like a synthy record. Um, but it was also just kind of like a statement of like, this is what we did during this time. Like, and with Flatworms, it was just like, oh, we have all these songs. We should record them and put them out. And yeah. I mean, and there's some real heat on this new album. Oh, thank you. But, yeah. I, not a lot of planning on my part on that record. But I think Will and Justin had. Well, I'm, I'm glad that everybody was, who was a part of it is a part of it. Oh, me too. <laughs> me too. Me too. Did you feel that uh, Time Warp and Exile, Suburban Swans, and Sig Alert were all going to be the, the singles from that album? I think we uh, all just kind of agreed those would, those would be the ones. Like, we kind of did like a little, uh, do a little tally system. We all, we all kind of vote on stuff, and stuff is like unanimous. We're like, all right, this, this will be it. We did the same thing with like a PR photos. Oh. <laughs> like just so everybody's happy for the decisions yeah the democracy of worms and it works it works yeah it's important um i was very glad to see the dancing came back um, in the in a, in a music video that was, that was really nice they were they're much i'm warp in exile I, I got a little too silly from that. but they, they did they did a great job uh, and uh, and that'll be linked below for everybody to go to go check out. It's a, it's a great music video. Yeah, it was uh, it was Ty's idea, and he wanted to do it at his house in the in the studio. And uh, I mean, it took us probably less than two hours to do. Uh, it was fun. I I I like that it's kind of, I mean, not just to give everybody an idea. It's kind of you're uh, it, a little bit transparent. I guess is the is the is the term to use on that. You guys are kind of floating on and off the screen there, yeah. and uh, I, I I I I thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, thank you. I I enjoyed making it. It was a fun, silly day. Yeah. In the studio. In the studio. Yeah. It's not just a music studio. It's also a dance studio. Little known fact. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that that works. Um. Yeah, that that'll that'll be linked below for, for everybody to to see. Are you much of a dancer outside of music videos, Tim? Like, will you will you dance at at a show? Not so much. Uh, I feel like that uh, requires a, a bit of self confidence that I don't necessarily have, or uh, I feel like I get too anxious for something like that. I'd have to. I don't know. That takes like someone that can really let themselves go. I'm, I'm wound up way too tight to do something like that. Although when my girlfriend and I went to see Egyptian Lover, there were some folks that were just losing their goddamn minds, and I was just so envious of that level of freedom. Like, uh, I, I, I wish I could do what you're doing. Totally. I wish I could just not care and just strut it um, yeah i mean you you'll 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 bust that little bit of moves playing bass a little bit right i mean like you'll 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 readjust and maybe do one of these you know, it's like a slight yeah you can make some some head nods and yeah you know if you play it through back to the crowd it's even easier you know i mean it's like they're not even there <laughs> i used to always play with my back to the crowd it was just so nervous Oh, yeah, I mean, you're taking after Jim Morrison there. Jim Morrison used to do that himself. So, yeah, the Lizard King. Probably for nerves as well. Uh, no, I, I slowly worked my way to uh, playing sideways. Mm -hmm. drummer. Fa is it call. now, would you be facing the uh, the band or facing a wall? Or, like, which which way did you turn? Oh, facing the band, yeah, yeah. Okay, so from, from behind or from facing the back wall to facing the... The, uh, the band yeah so like um if uh yeah if you're on stage 
and I'm at st I'm at stage left. I'm facing the drummer who is in the center, either Justin or Dan. Um, yeah, sometimes I'll just feel fully ready to face the crowd and, and just so. get that get that head moving. <laughs> yeah, shake off the nerves. <laughs> Going back to the to the Flatworms album, though, was there a song from Witness Marks that stuck out to you for some reason? Ah, uh, I guess that song "Time Warp and Exile" really. Uh, I don't know. That's that song just sound, it just felt right. Um, it was just one of those ones when we wrote it. It kind of just flowed pretty seamlessly, like. Um, sometimes like the best songs are just the songs that just kind of come out of nowhere where like the three heads just kind of become one and you just feel really connected with the people that you're playing with and there's just a lot of unspoken things and like people have these ideas like, oh we should do a pause right here or this is when we should go to the chorus and it just all flows really smoothly um and that was one of those songs. We've had like a handful of songs like that where they just flow really easily during the writing process. And, you know, usually those turn out to be like our best songs. Um, so that song, that song really, I don't know, it felt really easy. There's, you know, there's one song on there like called 16 Days that like we labored over so much and it just like, listen back to that, I'm like, ah, that song's kind of a stinker we could have uh could have thrown that in the recycling bin but um yeah sometimes it's the songs that are just really easy or just the the best ones like i don't know sometimes like you kind of have to take your thinking brain out of something and just almost ride like a sense of like i don't know like conjoined brain intuition if that makes sense like everybody's just becomes one head we're just riding this wave of intuition together it's um i don't know if that sounds hippy dippy ish but like sometimes that's just no like, i'm with you yeah that's just it, like the best the best stuff like yeah like, um, but it, it's is it hard to tap into that space and it, can you only do that with a certain pe with certain people that you could really come together like that i think it, feel? It, it totally depends on the people that you're doing it with um it's like a level of musical chemistry and it's also just tough to like tap into something like that like um for like flatworms like a lot of songs come out of a jam in which like somebody will bring something to the table and we go from there it's very rare that we you know someone will come in with like a complete song although will's done that a handful of times and those songs have been pretty great um a lot of times like it'll just be like one idea that somebody has and then it just goes from there um ocs are similar but it's more like a john conducting where the jams go like he'll, he'll listen to we'll do like a long jam and he'll record it and then he'll come back later and be like all right from like I feel like I've talked about this maybe on the podcast before, but like from like 456 to like you know 529, like that's when we did the, this really good thing. Let's do that again. Um yeah. I don't know. Even if you had mentioned that on this podcast, I I, I want it mentioned again, Tim. Okay. No shame. No shame in that at all. Um is it is it uh is it a kind of a different you kind of got to switch gears a little bit if you're like like uh for the double duty that you pulled recently um with both both playing with flatworms and the OCs do you kind of have to shift in a different gear to um go from playing with just two other people to like five other people is that is that something that you need to to flip or is it pretty seamless transitioning between the two and, seems, and I meant four of the people, not five of the people. I apologize. It's okay. Uh, I think it's pretty seamless. Like, honestly, I, I don't really, I don't really think about it too much. I just get up and do the thing. Um, although it's it's nice though to be able to have a break between. So I was able to have like a good like two hour break between the end of the flatworm set and the start of the OC set. Um. 
yeah, it's usually pretty, pretty seamless. Like it's just like, it's a different kind of, each, those two groups are very different from each other in the way we play and like flat arms is a band that like, you know, like a 45 minute set is like, that's like, that's pretty good. Like that's anything longer than that might like uh, be a little much. But OCs is, you know, we, we play for a long time and just a different sort of way of playing. Like uh, we get a jam territory where the flatworm songs are a little more concise and mapped out. Whereas most seas we have some jams where we don't know where they're going to go. And um, yeah, I mean, it's you, it's incorporating different elements all the time with totally. with the OCs, yeah. and you react to each other in a different way. Like like you're playing these songs that you played for a long time, but then you, you slip in to the jams like you're reacting to each other and cues that various people are giving off of and like um and you know sometimes john will just have an idea and he'll be like it'll just want us to stop like out of nowhere and you got to kind of like watch for that cue um and um yeah flowers we really have that we're just playing the songs that we we know and, Good answer. <laughs> I don't know, sometimes I get I don't know. Yeah, all the time. Always. Always, Tim. Um, speaking of the OCs, uh, you also had another release with them uh this last year. Intercepted message. Intercepted message, I think it came out in August, I think. We'll go um, with that. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. That that sounds like a good month to be putting that out. So Yeah, I feel like it was it's a good time to put that out. Still don't have a copy of it. I gotta get a copy of it. How many um, how many copies do you own of of all of all the uh, especially the OCs uh, um, albums that you've played on and been a part of? I think I've got everything except for uh, except for uh, this new one. I okay. Gotta, yeah. 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 You gotta go pick that up. I highly suggest it. it's a really good record. Um, yeah, I, I like <laughs> I like to hear I like to hear I mean I've heard the MP3s a million times, but uh, I like to actually I like to actually hear. The record sounds on tape only, right? I mean, you, your your yeah, tape, tape specifically, tape or CD or uh, vinyl, or whatever. Right. However, I get a copy. I'll go take a copy. Eight track. I, I don't know if we did eight tracks for this. So this one we've done eight tracks for other ones. I, I yeah, there was a whole box set uh, which was amazing. I don't know when that came out, but it was oh yeah a huge got, assortment of I audio. Have, I don't have an eight track player. I don't know. Do you do you did you ever know anybody who did? I mean, I only knew one person ever to to uh, have one. Yeah, come to think of it, I don't know if I do know anyone that has that has one. You know, uh, what's his name? Uh, artist uh, Michael Hurley. I do. Yeah. yeah, I think he was like an eight track repairman for a while out in Astoria, Oregon. I don't know if he still does that, but um, I feel like yeah, like he was like an eight track repairman and. I don't know if he's still doing. That. I don't know if that's still doing the business up in Astoria, Oregon. But I mean, it's it's a, it's a hotbed for it. I've heard. Yeah, yeah. Real that's the out there. That's the scene out there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a this is quite interesting tidbit there, Tim. <laughs> Getting back to intercepted message. Uh all I mean, so that's I, two big releases in one year, Tim. Yes. <laughs> for that day. To me, uh, it was big. I uh, loved it. I, I'll tell you. I think I think some people liked them. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Two records in a year seems seems good. Seems, uh, I can't complain about that. Fantastic. Yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, kind of had like a. I don't know. They both came out roughly around the same time. Kind of like the tour. OC's tour of September was kind of the tour for that record, and then the Flowers tour of October was the tour for the Flowers record. So, got a good chunk of good chunk of road time clocked in. It's it's pretty good. Do you own all the Flatworms albums, by the way? I think so. I don't think there's a cassette tape that we did early on. But I don't think I've got a copy of that. Um, and what yeah. what was the uh, this supposed non non cassette date that you own or cassette uh, date, cassette date that you don't own 
yeah, it was uh so we did a, a first seven inch that we put out. It was just basically like two songs or no three songs that are on the seven inch and then two others that we um from that same recording session, but just they didn't go on the seven inch. Um and those two other songs weren't that great, so I mean I don't need to revisit those anyway. So will they be, as you say, recycled? Uh no, no. Those those go to the trash bin. Those ones uh I don't think we play those songs in probably like seven years now. But yeah, we've been pretty good at like keeping certain things in the recycling bin or just keeping them in the trash. Like there's certain songs where like, oh yeah, we can't ever let anyone see the light of day. Like we did one recording session that like before we did the full length, but after the first seven inch that just everything that could have gone wrong just went wrong in terms of how it sounded. Um, the guy that recorded us was super nice, super cool dude, but um, it just wasn't right. Like it just, the sound was wrong. And then some of our choices and how we approach certain songs were just uh, pretty bad. So there's certain things that like should never see the light of day. Well, I'll tell you what did intercept the message, and <laughs> I definitely saw the light of day. Yeah, it's out it definitely way. saw the light of day. Really good. Uh, I was I, I saw the um the the live performance of of the album in its entirety. Uh, through uh, was it, oh the best show with Tom Sharpling's YouTube channel. Yeah, posted yeah. the whole thing, and that'll be linked below as well. Definitely go check that out. Really fantastic kind of, um. Uh, I, I uh performance there really really enjoyed it uh i highly recommend everybody to to go watch that after this and uh was it the first time that you had played an album in its entirety with the band no we did um so we had this record called protean threat um i don't know if we did it in the the order that goes on the record we did it kind of like right before pandemic happened so i don't think we recorded the record yet I think we we're about to, and then the world went to shit. We still recorded the record, um, but yeah, uh, Tom Sharpling thing. I don't know if it was right before the record came out or after. Um, yeah, it was really fun. Uh, Tom, super cool. Um, I don't think we needed to do a, a shit ton of takes. I think most of the songs were done in one or two takes. Um, the last song took me. Like two or three times to do because I I did not play that song on the record and I was pretty nervous to play something so sparse because I'm used to playing stuff where there's a it was the last song on that record it's just Tom and John um, there isn't a bass on it it's just keys but John wanted me to play bass on it um, to fill it out a little bit more and I'm not really used to playing very sparse bass um, I'm kind of just used to playing in rock bands where there's a lot of stuff to distract from potential fuck ups and so yeah I, I fucked up. <laughs> uh, if you could perform uh, another VOC's album in its entirety from front to back, what would you want to to uh pull out of the pull out of the woodwork for that? Uh I guess it should all, it should be a one that features everybody that's in the band right now. Like um Maybe the Face Stabber record. Um, I think that'd be cool. It was the first record that we did with Tom as a member. He played on the record before that, but he wasn't in the band. Um, I think that one would be cool. There's a big range on that record. Um, and what about one that not everybody is on, but is um, covering? I guess Mutilator Defeated at Last would be a fun one. Um, that, was the, that was the first record I did with the band. And similarly, like a lot of those songs, like when, when I was talking about like how there are things that just come out of like three heads kind of becoming one. Um, a number of the songs on that record were kind of written in that style of like just three people kind of coming together and just writing an intuition into to the uh, I don't know, into wherever we're writing it into 
but uh, I don't know. Those songs turn out. Some of the songs on that record turn out really cool. Yeah, Before, definitely. It's it's a great great album. Recording on my end is so quick. I mean, I think Nick and I were out in like two days, and then um, you know, we f- and we flew back from Sacramento. We recorded at the dock in Sacramento. So this guy Chris Woodhouse. Um, yeah, it was super, super quick. But that guy, um, he no longer works there. I don't even know if that studio is still around. But he has just like really incredible gear. Um, like one of my favorite drum sounds ever. Did you ever listen to that band, uh, Big Star? You ever a fan of Big Star? Yeah, uh, I mean, I I know of it. I do not know their music well, but please continue. Well, so the first record called Number One Record, um, my favorite drum sound ever, and one big component of that drum sound is these preamps I was using by this company called Spectrasonics. Um and at the at the dock in Sacramento, like they had those preamps. Um so he, he could just get like a really crazy cool drum sound. Um and then I would I don't know. That record has some cool songs. It was a cool, interesting time. And I'd be really curious to see how like could pull something like that off like with the five of us now in the current current lineup and be curious to see how like play that record in its entirety with dan paul tom john and me kind of crazy yeah i don't i mean it's all hypothetical I mean, this, this will never happen but um look yeah. i know i i might surprise you i know a couple of the dudes not well at all but i know a couple of them i'll i'll, I'll float it past them and see see what uh see what yeah, they yeah. say it's like Tim wanted to do this. What do you think? Yeah. Hey, Tim asked me to ask you guys. So <laughs> yeah, I too- think, I think that's a good answer though. I think that's it. That, that'd be a great one to hear. I would, I would, I would love to hear that as well. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. I think that's a good answer on, on, on both ends, Tim. So you're satisfied with what I gave you there. Very, very, Perfect. absolutely. Perfect. Um, Before, playing going back to this Tom the Tom Sharp Sharpling's uh big show um before playing the cover of Blurts The Fish Needs a Bike John had uh said that it was the first time that you were singing in the OCs yeah. uh in in a live setting. Yes. Was that a big milestone for you or was it just another I mean it was uh another big show. I uh I don't really have much in the way of a vocal range. Like when I sing in flatworms, just doing backups, I'm almost just kind of like shouting and hitting maybe three or four notes. So I think uh, with that blurt song, weren't really any notes I had to hit, but just kind of had to just shout a phrase. <laughs> just had to shout, fish needs a bike. And I really, I like that song. I like that band. So I was so stoked to do that. You you were familiar with that song pre it being brought up to cover it. Yeah, yeah. I had a I had a blurt compilation record. That's really good. It came what, really, what was it on it? Yeah, yeah. It came with a really ugly yellow t shirt too. You know, I've been trying to bleach, trying to make it in like an off white, but it's just it's still like gross yellow. Are you are you not down with yellow t shirts in general? I think it just makes me look like I have jaundice. Can't really, I can't. I don't know. Is it I mean, is it really bright yellow or like a more mustard? It's a pretty, it's a pretty bright yellow, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I thought I wasn't a yellow t shirt person either until uh, I now I have a few. I mean, it, it works for certain people. I think I think it would it would work for you, Tim. I I I I would I would wager it looks better on you than you think it does. Hey, you might be right. Um. You might be wrong, so I can't say it. It's, that, that, is, that is also a very, very uh, big possibility. Yes. How do you feel about wearing your band's merch um, by, or, or a band that you're in's merch? Uh, I haven't really done it. Um, I feel weird about doing it. Um, but I think, you know, I guess it depends on like if you're on tour and you just really haven't had an opportunity to do laundry, I always felt like that was probably like Bruce Dickinson always wore like Iron Maiden shirts. Like he just didn't have access to a laundry machine for a while. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Why not? I don't have the information to prove you otherwise. 
Yeah, I yeah. just yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I heard with, that guy. Please. He's on. He runs something like five miles. Over the course of a performance, like his step count is about five five miles. So I'm sure that guy is just like destroying shares with his. That guy's back. going through. So he just five gets... miles, dude. That's what I heard. Yeah, like his step equivalent, like during his shows. I mean, if you see like footage of him, he's like, he's like a madman. On st- on st- I mean, that's a lot of back and forth. I mean, like, you, granted, they're doing like big st- bigger stages. I'm not saying that they're not, but that's a lot of going back and forth. And you'd think that he would trip on a cord or something. I mean, they play like two hour sets, and I feel like he's like moving around, man, the whole the whole time. I mean, I, I've, I've been wrong before. But Talk about cardio, fun. though. I mean, yeah. if if you were that. Right, he doing miles on stage and he flies the iron maiden plane man i mean you you you, you got to get that exercise in somehow you can't that's not you know i don't i don't know how difficult flying a plane is but it's, it's not the probably, same as it's probably pretty difficult one time coming back from lax i think john and i were in uber together and we looked back and we were like, holy shit it was like the it had there's this massive 747 and it had the eddie monster on the side Holy shit, that's Iron Maiden's plane. You're positive it wasn't a Delta? I mean, maybe. I'm, ju- I'm just <laughs> asking. Some collaboration between the two, between Iron Maiden and Delta? Yeah, I, or or was it JetBlue? I can't remember which one. It was JetBlue or Delta. It was one of those two that they did a little collaboration. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Flight 66. Yeah, Bruce Dickinson runs five miles on stage and then flies the plane in the next gig. Total, total superhuman. Would you consider that cardio if you were moving around that much on on stage, Tim? If you if you did the equivalent of five miles or the steps of five miles, if you were really moving around like that, would you would you feel the need to still run, or would you be like, ah, I kind of got my steps in on stage? Oh yeah, it's still yeah. It's just good to clear my head and get outside and calms me down. Good for the good for mental health, good for physical health, and it's a lot of pros. Yeah, and also if you're doing it, if you're able to do it outside, it's kind of a cool way to see the town. Mm -hmm. Um, Like um, yeah, sometimes you really don't get a sense of the place that you're in because you're at a venue in a hotel, and you know, going running or taking like a long walk, it's just like. You just can experience town a little bit more than you can just from a hotel and venue, you know. A window. Yeah, the window, the Starbucks, you know, there's yeah. Yeah, you got yeah, you gotta get your coffee. You gotta get it in there. Whether whether you're in the States or outside the States, you gotta you gotta hit the coffee. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's crucial. Your, gotta get your breakfast sandwich or oatmeal. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. I I don't eat at Starbucks, but I, I, I know a lot of people who do. Like, oh, I'll get them. I mean, I egg I, sandwich, whatever. I don't when I'm not on tour, but when I'm on tour, yeah, it's usually pretty easy. Although Whole Foods is kind of a better option because you get usually better coffee and better food, but sometimes you don't have that luxury and you just gotta in the in the States you're saying? Yeah, in the States. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say I was like, I don't I don't know Whole Foods was international. I suppose there was one in London, but I've never seen it. I feel like we went to one in Canada once, but um. Well, I mean, I don't know why, but Canada makes more sense of having a Whole Foods than uh, London. I don't know why. It's just it's closer to the home base, I guess. Closer. I feel like the London store might have just been an, an experiment. I don't know if it's still there. This is something we can look into. Were you usually familiar with all the um the the cover songs? And the only ones I can think of is like Black Flag's "Nervous Breakdown." I want to see you guys covered. Yeah, we did. Uh... We have five Black Flag songs and a Faust song on one of those uh, live sessions. And another live session we did uh, a bunch of Chrome songs. We did a rudimentary p song on a record called Foul Form. Um, I was only like uh, vaguely familiar with Chrome. I think I bought like the wrong record. I guess sometimes some bands have like a pretty extensive discography. 
and there's like the records you need to hear and then the other records where you're like yeah not that, not that crucial i started out on the less crucial chrome record and it didn't grab me and i just kind of gave up on them and then when i heard we were doing some cover songs i was like i should get familiar with that. familiar with this and then as i was listening to it, i was like oh, i really should have paid more attention to chrome they have some great records but i was just so nonplussed by the first record i heard so you you knew of the name not so much oh yeah the... I knew the name. um mm-hmm. and i'd actually I'd, you know i'm even after like being kind of unimpressed by the one record I heard, I did go see. So it was originally just a duo of Dame and Edge, and I don't know if you know much about the band, but it was, it was I don't. It was Dame and Edge and Helios Creed, and the record that I heard was predominantly like a Dame and Edge record. Um, what first, was the uh, What was the the record? I don't even remember the name. It's it's like the first Chrome record. Okay. Um, but then I remember, like, I went to see Helios Creed at the Echoplex one time. I was, like, blown away. It was, like, a total freak show. I know he was, like, living in Santa Cruz, and the band just seemed like a Craigslist band of just random folks. And it was awesome. It was so fucking cool. Uh, but then I still didn't check out Chrome. And I was, like, like 10 years later, like, John was, like, oh, we're going to do this, these Chrome covers. And I should really familiarize myself with this band. Um so now, now, and I bought. Now I bought the box set. Love them. Big old fan now, but it wasn't at the time. Did the box set include another copy of the vinyl you already had the, of the first record? Uh, uh, no, actually. Okay. I don't think it did. I think it was just mainly from like the era that everybody likes. All right. Yeah. Um. Do you enjoy playing covers overall? Do you Do you enjoy that? Yeah, I think it just depends what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you kind of want to not desecrate a song. Like, you kind of right. want to, you know, be respectful of the song in the, in the group. Um, Paying homage. Yeah, yeah, totally. Do you say homage or homage? I kind of don't even say either. <laughs> I never really. I feel right. like I, I never really say that word. I'm gonna type it out, and then that leaves the uh, pronunciation up to the reader. Uh, do you enjoy singing, Tim? Singing? I'm, singing? I'm not. I'm not good at it, but it's a. Uh, it's fun. Um, if, like if my limited range is appropriate for whatever is going on. I'm, I'm having a good old time. Does it feel different when you're both? singing into a microphone and playing the bass as opposed to just playing the bass without singing? I mean, it's, that's one more thing to think about, I guess. Do lyrics ever come into your brain while you're just noodling around or composing your part of a song? No, not really. Um, I really like titles, though. Um, oh, okay. I've never titled anything, though, for Flowerms. Um, but you you have for the OCs? No, never for OCs either. But um, yeah, I just got a got a little thing on my phone of just strange word pairings or odd phrases that I see out in the world. I think that would be an interesting title or something. I don't know if it'd be. I don't know what I'd ever use it for. I'm just just writing stuff down. Uh, maybe a poem or something will come out of it or something i don't know but yeah i i like it i can't wait to hear either either the release of the album or the the collection of poetry um tim i really appreciate you coming back on man number four um i four. really really <laughs> appreciate it fourth uh, time coming on and yeah. we're, and we're still covering bases here and uh it's, it's always a pleasure to chat with you sir thank you um as you know i got some promo to do we got a lot of stuff this time so uh flatworms newest release witness marks is out uh through god question mark records hey did you say god or do you just say god question mark uh i just say god okay it's a subsidiary of drag city records um cory hansen had a great way of saying it he he pronounced it so well he, he had like the little like uptone on the on the how, end of there how did he do it he was like god i think it says think is how he said it but I, i'm not doing it justice but he oh. he said it really well that's a good way of saying it. Yeah. 
uh, and that is uh, able to be purchased through dragcity.com, like like Tim just mentioned, uh, with the other releases as well. And uh, you can also find all the releases and the merch through the Bandcamp, which is at flatwormsmusic.bandcamp.com. And you could stream all the, the releases uh, wherever you stream your music. And yeah. everybody can stay up to date with news, tours, releases, and everything else by following the band on Instagram at Flatworms Band. And uh, the OC's newest re- release that we we're just kind of chatting about, uh, Intercepted Message, is out now through In the Red, right? In the Red Records, yeah. Good deal. And that can be purchased uh, at In the Red Records.com or through the Bandcamp at OC's.bandcamp.com, along with a bunch of other releases and some merch. Uh, and all of their music can be streamed wherever you stream your music. And, and you get a lot of the merch from uh, Wax Face Toys. Oh, Wax Face Toys. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then there's also an OC's merchandise Instagram. It's the only Instagram thing we have. There's... And, that, and that, that is official. That's right? official. Yeah. We don't, I, there's, there are a few other OC's Instagram accounts, but none of those are run by us. And, they don't respond to our messages at all. Uh, and that is at O S E S underscore merch underscore official on Instagram to keep up to date through Instagram and through the regular website, which is just at the OCs.com is also another place. Yes. Yeah. And there's perfect. Um same thing. Tim, you're you're awesome, man. Do we have anything else to promote? Yes, we could uh I could promote getting a flu shot. Because I got such a horrible flu this year, and it would have been prevented had I. We had to reschedule this thing partly because I had a horrible flu, and uh, it could have been prevented had I gotten a flu shot. Thank you so much, Tim. I really appreciate you coming back on. Always a pleasure chatting with you. Well, thanks for having me. And I'll see you at Zebulon. Okay. All right. Sounds great. Right. Thank you, sir. <laughs>